Hello, Davina. It is great to have you here to talk about the really exciting journey that you've had at Bolton College around supporting and developing professional learning. So let's do a little bit of introduction first. So my name is Joanne Miles and I'm a consultant and a trainer and a coach in the FE sector. And we've worked together for the last 10, 12 years, maybe at Bolton College, supporting all the exciting work that you've been doing. So do you want to introduce yourself for people listening? OK, yeah. Good afternoon. And lovely to talk to you, Joanne. Um, I'm Davina Paulding, the Excellence and Innovation Manager at Bolton College. Uh, I've held that post since 2011 and basically it's a quality role, quality of teaching, learning and assessment um, and obviously it's our stride towards excellence that really underpins the whole of, of my remit. Great and it's going to be super to hear a lot about the work that you've been doing there over all of this big journey. So the first question I wanted to ask you was really around your influences. What or who has influenced your thinking around professional development, professional learning that really started all this work for you at the college? OK, well, obviously, I have to give you some credit, Joanne. We have been working indeed for uh, over uh, 10 years. And what you brought to the college was the introduction, really, of um, Jeff Petty's work on supportive experiments, um, I'm a, a teacher educator prior to uh, taking up this role, so I was used to looking at uh, Marzano's evidence-based teaching. Um, I also researched Matt O'Leary because he's been absolutely the forefront of ungraded observations. Uh, and also Joyce and Showers, you know, they're, they're three key areas where um, that, that's really influenced me because particularly with Joyce and Showers and their thoughts on um, how CPD is best achieved. Is it by set training days uh, in a college? And I do believe they do have a case, but then also I think teachers learn from each other. I was once asked who, who was my best mentor and I said every student teacher that I've ever taught yeah. because teachers learn from each other and it's extremely uh, powerful. It's a really great point. I think so much research over the last 10 years has really flagged that that space for teachers to think and share together, to take a risk, to explore new ideas. And all of that underpins the notion of the supported experiment cycle that Jeff promotes across the sector. And I think there's a strong link here, too, to teacher ownership and this notion of teachers choosing what to try out. And I think we'll talk about that when we think about the, the different development models that you've used there. So at the start of the journey, what was it that you were aiming to achieve? Well, how did you want to alter teachers' experience of professional development? Um, well, I felt we were perhaps uh, on a, a journey of a deficit model. That's what I inherited when I came into post, whereby we, we were looking to go into sessions and almost find things that were wrong in order to fix them. And having um, taught in teacher education I know that you, you're on a constant learning curve teachers are forever learning I'll never stop learning and what I wanted to do was to turn it around really and really treat teachers as the professional practitioners uh, that you know that they are they've been on their teacher education course they learn every day and every year that they are in post uh, and it's not about going in for a one hour session and finding some areas for development that they need to improve on. It really is about and, and wanting their buy in, wanting them to own their professional practice going forward. And that's much more motivational for them. It's safer uh, and, and it's, it's empowering. It's, it's just totally different than finding a few things, as I said, that, that might need to go on as an appraisal target. Yeah. So it was, it, was, it was my sort of, you know, love of growth mindset and um, thinking of teachers uh, doing, you know, that continuous professional development as a lifelong learning. I really love that, that sense of professional respect, harnessing that desire that most teachers I've met in my career, they want to improve, they want to do better for learners, they're curious. They'd like spaces in college and, and school life where they can have those conversations, try out things, talk to their colleagues, bounce ideas off each other. So I think it's really great that actually that was the basis of, the, of all the different kinds yeah. of work that you've done. Because thinking about your work there, I feel like there's an underpinning ethos to a range of things that you've done that are around your advanced practitioners, your take a chance on change, supported experiments model, but also your good to great project, which was around peer sharing and your work on ungraded um, lesson observation. So there's an 
ethos underneath all of those that I think is really in common, as you just described. I was just, I was just going to, to add, really, that, you know, that peer observation that we introduced through Take a Chance on Change and then that carried on into Good to Great, um, that's, that's been so similar to all the classroom discussions that I've ever had as a teacher where, you know, you go back and you share with colleagues and you say, I did this and it didn't particularly work and have you tried that and is there anything you could advise? So there's always been that respect amongst teachers to learn from each other, but they've rarely had that chance to go into the classroom or workshop and, and have a look. And so, as I mentioned, you know, staff development days do have their place, but there are just certain things, for example, questioning, mm -hmm. that it is just so much better to go into a session where you can see someone asking directed and probing questions. Well, all the staff development in the world by an external trainer may not achieve that penny dropping moment of, oh, that's how you do it, that's brilliant. And I'm gonna try that, I, I've seen it, I like it, I'm gonna try it. And then coming back and evaluating uh, and reflecting on that. It's really a fabulous thought, isn't it? This notion of live learning and the chance to see a technique actually in the round with learners as a full demonstration by a colleague. It's so different from reading about something or even watching a tiny clip to actually be in the room and feel the energy and the reaction of the students and watch the choice of the teacher in that situation, I think is, is a fantastic learning experience. And it's interesting yeah. that you touch on this notion of it being beyond a moment, beyond this one shot wonder notion of the staff development day. And I think my work has really shown me across the sector in the last 10 years that those staff development days can spark thought. They can be good for getting to people to share ideas. They can be stimulus input. But the real experimentation and the growth and the learning will happen in between those as people implement. And I think one of your strengths there at Bolton has been building the shape in which people can experiment and share and reflect almost as a project cycle across all the work that you've done. So I think do yeah. project management fits a lot into your thinking. Do, are you kind of aware of that? Um, yes, I've, I've, I think more from the point of view that uh, the funding that we've had available shapes that in the early days yeah. but then yeah it definitely has been a project to manage over this last decade really uh, you know s slightly different outcomes to achieve maybe for uh, different funding streams yeah. but actually for Bolton College's cause it has all been about just keeping our um, teachers on that growth mindset path so that they in, in, in turn do that for their own learners we're just we're trying to our the external force, if you like, is just wanting to create an excellent learning environment for our students. So, um, you know, it, it has been for definite a, a project to manage. And so many of those national project pots are from ETF in particular, as, as maybe the most recent one, the yeah. Advanced Practitioner Project, the, the Outstanding Teaching and Learning pots, all of those I think have made a massive difference to enable yeah. work to happen for people all over the place. So supported experiments then, action research cycle, really simple way of teachers exploring evidence-based practice, trying things out in their own classrooms and sharing that learning with each other, using each other's as support in that experimental cycle. You use that as a basis for a project called Take a Chance on Change. So what did that supported experiment cycle bring to the college, do you feel? Um, well, that was, the, that was the start of the journey was that you know, we would uh, allow our teachers to choose something, a, a topic, a theme, a, a teaching learning and assessment standard or aspect, if you like, that they would want to uh, enhance in their own area. And we had advanced practitioners, but also we had a team of coaches who uh, you trained, Joanne, you helped to train them, came in. And that was I suppose that was very resource rich. We had a coach per area. Yeah. The advanced practitioners were facilitators of that. It was quite demanding in terms of, of time, yeah. but it set the ball rolling for those conversations to be had in staff rooms. Um, with the small number of advanced practitioners we had at the time, we needed someone in our 18 curriculum areas yeah. to be able to be there on hand, 
um, to lead the work that was coming down through the um, the APs, and um, and they were you know they were asked to explore present practice, look at different pedagogical approaches, then carry out some form of uh, ex, you know supported experiment. Might have been a way of improving medal and mission feedback that Jeff Petty talks about, uh, seeing how that that worked, and then what was the impact on them and indeed their learners. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided as a college, I mean, sometimes when you do this kind of supported experiment, there is a thought of having group A against group B and mm -hmm. doing a comparison. But we, we didn't do that. We deliberately didn't choose that because we wanted it to be available for uh, all of our learners. And as early as the end of year one, we were really seeing that impact in the fact that teachers enjoyed engaging. And at the end of every staff development day, we would get them together and uh, talk through what had happened, plus have a learning festival at the end of the year where they could sort of share, uh, bring them by, almost like a, a bring them by sale, bring something along, uh, talk it through with other departments. Uh, and, and that really got the, the ball rolling of sharing across different teams. That was, yeah. I really like what you said about the fact that it was support from the beginning, that we had the coaching team, the advanced practitioner team. We also used Jeff Petty to actually present for us, I remember, around evidence-based strategies. So we yeah. had a pedagogical shot in the arm at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And the notion of it being curriculum supported, that there was a champion each, in each curriculum area, I think is really interesting because that has big, big benefits and gains. What did you notice the gains were from having people embedded in each department? Um, they couldn't. They could contextualize it more. So uh, we, you know, we had at the time. I think it was five or six uh, advanced practitioners across uh, nine uh, program areas. So obviously they couldn't be expert in every single field. Um, so the co the coach on the ground was was that was useful for sort of saying right in our team what are we struggling with at the moment or what are our learners struggling with, what do we want to try and uh, make better and then really going back to the advanced practitioners to to report back to get extra tips and tricks to to add to the mix and um, so that you know that was that was really nice because it was all about that ownership yeah uh, but it was resource intensive yeah it's a really great model if you can possibly resource it it means you can stimulate the conversations you can run very responsive cpd about the areas that teachers come up with I, I remember you had a teacher toolkit online where people were storing resources that the ap team and the facilitators were were helping to staff that part of the project as well so if you like there was a lot of um, injection of, of ideas of theory of practice and of the structured support for those conversations which was a real plus i think Excellent. OK, thank you, Davina. Let's pause there for a moment and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the coaching side of this.